My name is Carol Flavin and I'm a railway modeler. I have an, a railway at home that is called Edge and Strines Railway. And in 2020, I was going to go out with this waterfall diorama and do demonstrations at exhibitions. But when they were canceled, I decided to make some how I did it videos. This is the third and it is about how I made the waterfalls for it. Hello, my name's Carol Flavin. You may remember me. I was the team leader of the Loco Ladies, the first female team to take part in the Great Model Railway Challenge. We were invited to take our layout to the Worley exhibition at the NEC in 2019. So we were going to be doing demonstrations in 2020 of certain techniques that we'd used. Trouble is, of course, 2020, year of the lockdown, what we found was that we didn't go out and weren't going to be able to go out to the Model Railway exhibitions. So I may, I had in the meantime had made a diorama and that diorama was a rock face crashing waterfall with a pool at the base. So I've used that on my own layout now. I decided to make three videos on our hints and tips and information about how I made it. The first was about the cliffs, the second about the pool at the base, this is the third part and this is about how I made the crashing splashy waterfalls. I hope you find it interesting and I'm going to show you now how I went about making them. I painted the outline of where the water was going to fall down the face of the waterfall and the cliffs and then I painted the cliffs with shiny varnish because water splashes and makes them look shiny. I then used a flat brush to paint white dots to show where the fall of the waterfall was going to be at the base where the pool is. I'm using the heavy structure gel that I used to make the waves and the movement in the pool in video two and I've been putting pieces on the ledges as it goes up the waterfall because as the water splashes down there needs to be some evidence and some movement. At the base I've got a piece of plastic which I'm slotting into place to push the last bit of the waterfall away from the wall to give a more natural look of the water falling into the pool. I use crystal clear silicon to make my waterfalls. I've used a silicon gun and because these are the smaller waterfalls, I've done two lots of three runs of silicon. And then what I do is I use a spatula, a pointed spatula to push the rows together. And if you look closely, you can see that already they're beginning to get a feel of flow and movement. What I then do is do it all the way down both of them and I leave them to dry. The idea being that once they are dry or very nearly dry, I can move on to the next stage, which is painting them to look like real water. I use white acrylic and a small brush to paint a chevron shape down the waterfall to give a feeling of flow and movement to it. And the other thing that you also need is some splash. Where the water lands, anywhere where water lands, you will find that there is a splashy area, it's called spume. And I use an old Christmas fleece. You can lose lots of other fibres and you can buy some specially for this. But what you do is with, well, what I do is I tease a small bit away from the Christmas fleece, ready to use. I'm now at the point where I'm going to make the waterfall look more realistic. So I'm back using the heavy duty structure gel and I've put a layer of it on top of the waterfall that I'd created so far with the chevron shape on it. And I've laid a piece of the fleece, the, put, the pulled out fleece on it. And I use some more of the structure gel to push it into place, either with my finger, but it's a bit messy, or with a spatula. It's a bit ephemeral actually, and it's a tricky stage but it is the bit that makes it all look as realistic as you can possibly make it. This is a piece of the waterfall that I made earlier, which I wanted to show you. 
I couldn't find any other bits and this had been in the bin, so it's actually slightly dirty. But that doesn't really matter. I just wanted you to get a feel for what it looks like. Once it's dry, it's very flexible, which makes it an extremely useful product to work with. Once I've finished creating the waterfalls, I put them in place and if they're still tacky, they will actually stay where I want them to be. But if I need to, I put glue behind them to hold them in place. I use the heavy structure gel at the base and at the top to make a seamless join and also to create the feeling of movement of it flowing over the edges and down at the base. And having done that, I take some more of that fleece, tease it out and place it so that it looks as if there's a splash on the waterfalls. This is a short clip of the completed diorama. I had wanted to make something a bit like this when we did our layout for the Great Model Railway Challenge, but we didn't have the time. So I made this diorama to take out, along with some of the other loco ladies and some of the things that they have made, to do demonstrations at various model railway shows. Of course, it became 2020 and the lockdown. Most of the shows were cancelled. So I made the decision that I would use this diorama on my own layout instead. And I've been very, very happy that I have done. I thought I'd show you the diorama set in my own layout so you've got an idea of how I'm going to use it. There's going to be a big pool at the base, a beach, lots and lots of cliffs, another big crashing waterfall, houses, buildings, all sorts, but they are quite a long way off being finished and completed. But that's what I enjoy doing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and that the hints and the tips and the information that I've given you in it will be useful when you come to build the scenics on your own layout, possibly in a different way to the way that you thought you might want to do them. Thank you for watching this How I Did It video. And I do hope that the hints, tips and information contained in it have given you some new ideas for your own scenic model railway making. If that's the case, do please share it, like it, or tell anybody else about it that might be interested. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.